Almost 10 years ago, I honestly never thought that this show was going to make it to 200 episodes, let alone 100. So seeing just how far the series has come as it goes into its final season leaves a really strong bittersweet feeling inside me. I remember a lot of people asking what you're going to do when the show ends, and to be honest, I'm still looking for the answer to that question. MLP has become an interchangeable part of my life, and I honestly can't imagine life without it or it becoming any less of a factor after the series has concluded. I bring this up because the 200th episode, Twilight 7, feels like it understood how I was feeling about the series ending as I was watching it. It reminds me why after all these years, I still chose to stick by it through thick and thin. The episode which focuses on Twilight settling her sibling rivalry with Shining Armor by cracking the latest security system at Canterlot with the help of her friends, has already found itself being compared to Slice of Life as both episodes represent a milestone in the show's history. Now Slice of Life was a fun episode. It was enjoyably chaotic and managed to be self-aware of its fan pandering in a way that wasn't condescending. It ended on a really good moral and offered some interesting perspective on several side characters that the fandom had attached itself to over time, which was actually pretty amusing and creative in some way. But as much as I like Slice of Life, I have to give the winning point to Twilight 7 because it manages to feel more accomplishing as a milestone episode. Instead of being an insane combination of meme material and over-the-top antics, it tells a much more grounded and focused story. I watched the behind-the-scenes video just before the episode came out, and there was something interesting about listening to the cast talking about all the fun ideas they still wanted their characters to do. Rarity and Dash working as detectives, Pinky doing space travel, Zephyr Breeze as a royal guard, Applejack as a country western singer, Fluttershy as a spy, and doing an episode about pulling off a heist. I also caught a glimpse of a tweet made by Big Jim about how this 200th episode is a love letter to the five main actresses who carried us through this journey. They took ideas from each of them, narrowed them down to the ones they liked most, and incorporated them into one plotline. And I gotta say that looking at some of the background of this episode, even just a little bit, gives me a pretty good idea as to what it's really all about. One thing that absolutely makes the episode work is its structure. Everything from the pacing to the setup to the way the episode handles its several subplots in a cohesive way, it's a solid episode from beginning to end. None of it feels out of place and everything comes together in a way that's so clever and brilliantly thought out. Which is impressive considering the episode was done by the actors instead of the actual writers. To take all these crazy ideas that the actors just came up with and fitting it into a heist episode in a way that makes sense couldn't have been easy. But they really managed to pull it off. The characters are also given good writing and interesting methods of working off each other. The chemistry between each pairing that we get in this episode demonstrates some really witty dialogue that handles their dynamics in a fun way. And the episode places them into so many fun situations that we really haven't seen before. Like Dash being out of her element to distract Zephyr, which really indicates just how loyal she is to Twilight. Or Fluttershy and Spike having a moment where they relate to each other through sibling drama. Even Pinky imagining herself traveling through space is a fun idea that's visualized in a creative way. The rivalry between Twilight and Shining is fun too, as we get some really good snarky sarcasm from their exchanges. It's also great to see how the episode focuses on Celestius and Luna's sibling rivalry in a more humorous way. I really I really love the idea that they still have a rivalry even after all these seasons. It's a complex shaded relationship that's good to have in a kids show, and the episode is able to faithfully feature those kinds of sometimes strained and competitive relationships you have with your family. It's a brilliant dynamic to see in these two, and it feels like an excellent successor to their bickering in Slice of Life. The episode has a bunch of callbacks and references, but unlike Slice of Life where it was part of crazy fan service, they actually help the story progress and they're worked into the narrative in a logical way. The Screeching Geese, for example, are a reference to to the Battle of Alia, where the Gwals try to invade Rome but were foiled because Juno's sacred geese hurt them and screeched so much that they woke up the Roman guards. No, seriously, this actually happened. It's honestly quite brilliant how they managed to take a weird moment from actual history and fit it into the episode as a natural plot element. It's even a nice detail to see how worn out the crown is after 20 years since it was made out of tin foil, and in spite of being worn out, the crown never lost its sentimental value. It still acts as a nice symbol for Twilight's relationship with Shining, caring and sweet, but also complex and competitive. But my favorite part of the episode is how it handles Spike. There's a pretty big plot twist at the end where it's revealed that Spike had rigged the game from the very beginning, and it was all part of his plan to win the crown with Luna's help. What helps make this twist work is that it was subtly built up in a way where you really can't see it coming. 
so it really catches you by surprise. It's actually hilarious and creepy at the same time how Spike managed to pull this off while persuading Luna on his side, and how she was very willing to play a part in his plan. The fact that Spike had it all planned out before Twilight even had a chance to start showcases one of his best strengths, his ability to read into the other characters. He's very in touch with reality and knows how everyone around him tends to overthink things, and he perfectly takes advantage of it with his ability to predict their movements. And it makes sense that he'd be able to read into them so well because he has been friends with them for years. The other characters usually underestimate him, but he takes that attitude and twists it into their own weaknesses. He can read Luna's annoyance with Celestia and uses that to persuade her into a plan to one-up her, and it's done in a way that no one would suspect. And it's a sensible idea as it encourages Celestia to double-check the castle security. Seeing him come out on top and playing everyone else is a brilliant comeback for his character, and a far cry from the earlier seasons when he was treated as a butt monkey. But what happens after really cements the emotional value of the episode. It ends with Twilight and Shining acknowledging Spider like as a younger brother they always had. And it's another plot point that was also subtly built up. In the beginning, we see a couple of flashbacks laying out the sibling rivalry between Twilight and Shining explaining the sibling supreme competition. And during the flashback, we see Spike witnessing the sibling rivalry while growing up alongside them. And he expresses a desire to be part of the competition. Not because of any shiny prize, but because he wanted to feel accepted as part of the family. On some level, this is a sad implication of Spike's upbringing, where he always thought of himself as a sibling, but he was never treated as such. But seeing how he stayed loyal to them and wanted to be their brother even from such a young age is really touching, and it puts his earlier years into a very interesting new perspective. It gives the idea that Spike always thought of himself as part of the family, which helps establish the brother-sister relationship between him and Twilight, and it also helps explain why he would feel left out in things that she would be doing without him. However, what really makes this ending so heartwarming and satisfying is how it subtly pulls off the real plot twist. The main character of the episode wasn't Twilight, it was Spike himself. The episode is centered around his plan to win the crown, his feelings of being thought of as Twilight's little brother, and in the end, he wins that acknowledgement through his strong loyalty and wit. For a very long time, people thought of Spike as a secondary character instead of part of the main cast. But after this episode, there is no denying the legitimacy of Spike as one of the main characters of the series. He is the seventh member of the main seven. The title of the episode even acknowledges this with it being called Twilight Seven. Spike has been given so much more respect and proper development as the show got into its later seasons. But this was the episode that truly gave Spike his mental and allowed him to rise above the rest of the cast. Over the course of eight seasons, he went from a silly absent-minded child to a smart, confident, thoughtful, and strong-willed young adult. This feels like the ultimate culmination of his character arc, like everything he's ever been through was leading up to this point. He's finally seen as a main character and as a member of Twilight's family, and it's just so touching to see him come out on top like this. This is what makes Twilight 7 so much better than Slice of Life. Instead of concerning itself with me, memes and acknowledging the fandom, it takes itself much more seriously and puts together an actual story. And even then, it still gets to be a silly idea that was made up by the actors. Jim stated that episode 200 would be a thank you to the five main actresses, and it really feels like they accomplished that. They even got the credits for the story, so it really feels like it was their story all along. The background of the episode is about all these ideas they had for these characters, and they managed to pull it off in a quality way. Something that we tend to forget while watching shows like this is that the voice actors grow alongside these characters just as much as we do. So with this being one of the final episodes, it makes sense for them to have a shot at writing for them. Throughout the years, these actresses grew up with these characters just as much as we have, and they wanted to give them the chance to do all these fun things before it all ends. This episode was a milestone not just for the show and the fandom, but for the actresses as well. It really does feel like a love letter to them, giving their characters proper justice and so many fun things to do. It would have been really easy to just make another slice of life with unapologetic fan service, but they decided to do something different and less predictable, and what we got is arguably one of the best episodes in the entire series. Excellent writing for secondary characters, good humor, callbacks that help develop the story, and that really satisfying ending for Spike's character arc. A lot of people have come, and a lot of people have gone, and a lot of people rage quit the show for stupid reasons. But to know that I still chose to stay and got to see just how far the characters have come over the years really speaks to me. I don't know what's going to happen when it all ends, but I do know that it's been a really fun ride. Twilight 7, the 200th episode, was such a great episode for the way it handles its story with tact and grace, and how it successfully acknowledges just how far the series has come, and how much it's accomplished. It's a celebration of how MLP has grown over the years and the impact that it's made on popular culture. It's an episode that does everything right, and continues to show that they're really making a comeback after Season 8. Let's hope that for the rest of the show, it certainly stays that way. This is Map, signing out.